morning. I'm here on a fine Saturday morning. I'm about to do a walk up a local mountain. Um, well, it's not local to me anymore actually, it's near Abergavenny, not Cardiff. And it's called Skirid Fower. And I'll tell you a bit more about the mountain history on the route. Um, I hate narrating in public. So this mountain is famous for around these areas for many reasons. There's a lot of uh, myth and folklore about uh, bets with the devil and things like that, which I will talk about a bit later on. Um, but there's also uh, a little known fact that um, during World War II, Hitler's second in command was a guy called Rudolf Hess. And he decided one day to fly from Berlin solo to Scotland uh, in an attempt to broker peace with, with uh, the UK between Germany. That's the Sugarloaf Mountain over there. We will be doing that another day as well. And yeah, so he flew to Scotland in an attempt to broker peace with the UK. Obviously the UK was having none of it and we arrested him straight away. But for some reason then he was housed down in a, you can't see it, but it's a little hotel, uh, hospital, sorry, down there called Maindef Court uh, Hospital. Oh. And he was housed there. And he was allowed uh, during that time, uh, during the war, to come hiking up this mountain, the Skirid. Uh, so he he was up here all the time, um, which is quite bizarre feeling knowing he was a Nazi war monster hiking up this beautiful place. But anyway, after the war finished and obviously we won, he got flown back to Berlin to face uh, charges of uh, war crimes, which obviously he got a life sentence for. Ended up going to prison, run by Russians, and he ended up killing himself in 1987 at the age of 93, hung himself. So, a sad but fitting end to a monster. Anyway, so that's a bit about the Nazis. So this is just a little walk. It's only four miles if you do the circular track. I will be doing today. Of course about three miles if you just do the straight up and straight back down. This is just the boring part. Gotta do this little lane to get to the beginning of these woods. And in the proper summertime these woods are stunning. But they are steep. I love this bench. Someone's actually carved it into the shape of the Skirid Mountain. Now, the Skirid is famous for a huge landslide, which they've shown here. Um, I'll photograph a bit later for you. But it's uh, prone to landslides because it's built, I say it's built, it's not built, it's naturally formed with red sandstone on top of muddy clay. So it just, they say that this landslide happened at the exact second Jesus was crucified. You decide if you think that's a load of bull or not, but. Anyway, Skirid and Fower means large broken or large large slides or something like that. I'll put it up on the screen what it actually means because well I don't I don't speak Welsh to my uh, own detriment.
and this will be blanketed with bluebells and snowdrops and the odd daffodil. It's truly stunning. Ah, there you go. Someone doing something. Philip passed away April the 10th today passed away yesterday on April the 9th I mean regardless of your thoughts about him he was kind of legendary with a lot of the things he did he did a lot of good for people in general and uh, yeah I know he was a bit of the old school way with his sort of outdated speech which would come across a bit racist and things but he wasn't a bad man. when you come out of the woods now which I'm about to do when I go up this path actually about halfway up in height it's not half the walk but it's halfway up in height finish this walk uh, during it I'm going to show you a couple of little things um, I bought my new uh, dragon mini fuel stove with me, which I'm going to see if we can make a cup of tea on it, or a cup of coffee rather, um, which I have featured in a few videos but never used. Uh, and I'll just keep showing you the beautiful views and hopefully don't kill myself because I feel knackered. So I decided I'm going to put a little playlist together on our channel, and it's just going to be the Black Mountains. And the Black Mountains are basically the most eastern side of the Brecon Beacons, uh, bordering between Abergavenny and Hereford, all on the Welsh side. Uh, and it's essentially everything you can see right now. All this. It's a sugarloaf, as I mentioned earlier. So Hereford's that way, 20 miles. You've got Lantoni Priory and Abbey up that way. which will make another good video for us. That there is the Blorange. So that, that mountain, the Blorange, Sugarloaf, and this one, the Skirid, they make the Abergavenny Three Peaks. The challenge is just to do them in a day, which is actually, it's not as bad as you think. Now this uh, mountain is also known as Holy Mountain. Um, there's the remains right at the very top by the trig point. Of the, of the church. I believe it was called St. Martin's Church. 
I might be wrong on that. Uh, I'll put the name up. Um, there's also the remains of an Iron Age camp up here, but I've never really noticed it. I only learned that just from reading, so I couldn't show you any of that. About 15 years or so ago, my best mate, or one of my best mates, father, uh, sadly passed away. It was a bit of a shock, uh, a bit out of the blue. When he loved this mountain, so his ashes were scattered up on this mountain, with permission. And he's got a plaque, most of the way at the top, on one of the stones. His name was John Jones. I hope you can hear me, it's really windy, but uh, for hundreds of years, as I said earlier, this was known as Holy Mountain. People would pilgrimage from all across Britain to come here, because there was a church purchased, purchased right on the end. Uh, and it, uh, it's been said that this is one of the most holy places in all of the UK, so much so that wherever they built any churches or abbeys or anything around, they would have soil from this put into the basis, the foundations of every church. That's how holy it was considered to be. So, I'll show you now. This is the famous landslide. The camera's not really doing it justice, but all the mountain gave way, slid right down to here. Apparently it was here for 100 miles around. But obviously, there's no records of that because of how long ago it happened. But yeah, that's the result of all this red sandstone being dumped on top of the clay. The clay gives way. Right, as I mentioned earlier, my mate's father passed away, John Jones. There's a plaque here dedicated to him. Nice little hidden plaque. Like I said, he was a he was a great father, a proper family man. Had an awful lot of respect and friends. several tribes in Wales, covering the whole of Wales. And this area was known as the Solarians. And they were a rough and ready people, ready to fight anyone. They stopped all invaders. They even prevented the Romans from coming in for long enough time. But obviously, the Romans then, instead of trying to conquer them, tried bartering with them, tried showing them new clothing, new technologies and eventually won the Sumerians over that way. So, conquest through friendship. And then the rest of Wales, <laughs> they charged through the top of to wait for these people to go away from the trick point. I'll show you the stones that mark the entrance way of the church.
justice at all. I don't know if it will. I don't really want to go too close to the edge because it's not a, the most stable of mountains. But I am out. It's a proper cliff. Proper cliff. And there's the remains of the lance, the slight slid. So you can see the path down here as well that I'll be taking, um, going across there and running through them woods. But for now, I need to carry on circling around. And look, someone's doing a bit of wild camping down there. In the red tents. Don't get a red tent if you want to camp stealthy. sheltered enough for me to do a coffee. I think it is. This is good. Right, I was going to go a bit further down, but I think I'm just about hidden enough from the wind. So yeah, let's do this. Right. Dragon. Fire Dragon mini cooker. Sorry if the camera's shaking. Please. So just in case you didn't see the other video where I showed this before, this is the Mini Dragon stove. It fits one of these Dragon Fuel tablets perfectly. Put it in, light it. This was enough said, didn't it? It doesn't need any more explanation. Right. I'll film from a different angle now so you can see exactly where I am. And Immediately I can see that this is quite small, um, so I don't think it's going to balance your pots and pans very well. But what I'm going to do, I don't think you're supposed to do it, but I'm going to bend these clips out. I really don't think you're supposed to do it, but I'm going to bend mine out like that so it's got a bit more stability. Just for while I'm cooking up on this uh, ridge in the wind. Simple fuel tablets. These fuel tablets are actually handy because they're actually cleaning as well, so you can you can rub your hands and clean <laughs> clean your hands with them. of a coffee cup from earlier so take your rubbish home. Now I am noticing that this is actually set fire to some of the grass around. Um, it's not too bad but if it was a dry day I would I would urge caution with this a bit. It's not a as you can see it is it's very active. Let's see how it's doing under there shall we bubble it away nicely it's a four mile, four mile long route, if you do the circle one, like I said earlier. Um, in all honesty, if you're a fit person, you could do it realistically easy within an hour, hour and 20 minutes. But the, that's not the point, is it? You want to sit here and enjoy views like this. You know, it's a, it's a glorious mountain to be on. And I'm in such a beautiful little spot. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it at all, but... I am an idiot. I haven't forgotten my cup at all. I'm stupid. I got my brand new uh, Mandalorian one I had off uh, my wife for my birthday, but I've put this uh, silicon strap on it because I want to protect the Mandalorian's face. Uh, I know it sounds stupid, but it just looks awesome, so yeah, I don't want to ruin it. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. A little thermal insulation cup. 
Um, Alright, that means I don't have to use a crappy day old Greg's cup now. <laughs> Yay! Right, just put my coat on because it got a little bit chilly. Um, the fuel stove has run out now. Uh, went for about five minutes or so. I mean, there's a lot of steam coming off, but whether that water's boiled or not, I do not know. So I will pour my coffee and see if it works. I'm just using these Taylor's coffee bags. Coffee bags themselves are 100% biodegradable. I mean, take it home with you if you can, but if not, don't matter if you put it in a bush. So, I mean, I have no idea if this is going to be warm or not. So it could be a cold cup of coffee. It could be a nice cup of coffee. I'll leave it brew for a good few minutes first. Sorry about this filming position, but I got a camera wedge between my legs on a selfie stick. Right, so sadly the coffee was lukewarm. I, I got to have a hard coffee, but it didn't do me. Um, it's not the slag there, stove off. I mean, I've done it in in a bit of the wind, so it would stood a better chance if I uh, it again. Right, so made my coffee and just burned my tongue. <laughs> but that was the result of the gas cooker, not the dragon fuel thing. Uh, honestly, I can't recommend the dragon fuel mini stove. I highly recommend the tablets, they're brilliant for starting fires. Um, but as for cooking off just one tablet, you wouldn't get any boil in the bag food, even a reasonable temperature to enjoy. So, the mini stove is a bit of a faff don't really do the job unless you're going to have two or three tablets. So, for me, the gas stove still wins. Now. lots of uh, folklore stories like the one I mentioned earlier about this uh, landslide happened the exact second that Christ was crucified. Um, there's another one that's uh, um, I can't remember who it was meant to be but someone had a bet with the devil that uh, I think it was at the don't quote me on this, but it's something like this. Someone had a bet with the devil that this mountain was higher than the Mulvans. The Mulvans, you can't quite see them today, but uh, they're around Worcester way. On a clear day, you might be able to just about see them. But anyway, we had a bet and the, the, the devil apparently cheated and tried to dump a load of earth on top of the Mulvans to make them higher than this mountain. But, as legend goes, the devil messed up through trying to cheat and he dumped the mud on the wrong mountain, he dumped it on this mountain. If you believe that, if you believe in the devil. I don't, but each to their own. I believe in good and bad, but I believe that resides in all living creatures. I don't believe in uh, religion, so to say. But that's not to talk down any of those of you who do. You believe what you want to believe. If it doesn't harm anyone, believe what you want.
went up. Those people are going. And uh, this is my route back down to the car. So that's where the people were making a fire earlier. I wonder if they're still there. Doesn't look like it, so I'm gonna go and check out there. I'm gonna go and check it out. I mean, it's quite well established so far. So I'm not exactly sure what they were trying to make here. It looks like a very thin start to maybe a circular TP, I don't know. I would like to finish it off for them, but never build another man's cabin. It's a bit of an unwritten rule outdoors. If this is someone else's spot, I wouldn't want to come here and uh, change or destroy anything they've, 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 they've done. I mean, fair dues. It's not a bad little spot at all, really. Weird. I don't know what it is. The last weekend I went walking up in uh, Snowdonia and it was filled with, filled with English people. We only met three Welsh women and they were in the same group. The rest, no joke, all English. Now I got no problem with the English at all. I think most of them are great. Um, the only problem is they're not supposed to be here. It's coronavirus. Wales isn't open to them. So, Stop being released. It's no wonder the North Wales has got one of the highest rates in Wales at the moment because they're all going up there. But it's been about 10 people today. English. You know? And it's. Once again, I'm not having a dig. But you shouldn't be here. It's a serious thing. If we all play the game properly, we'll all be out of it quicker. If you keep arsing around and doing shit that you're not supposed to be doing, like turning up in places you're not supposed to be, you're going to help spread it. I mean, use your noggin. It's not just for hats. <laughs>